and we are live hello everybody and welcome in to critical misses for time and time again uh and yeah uh we i've had the episode title on every single one of the trailers so far yeah yeah well, i just noticed <laughs> <laughs> it will continue um but yes welcome into uh an episode five of time and time again the love that binds them chapter five um we've got an amazing group of folks here tonight uh chase will be joining us uh, probably after the second half and uh we're excited to tell a story for you and uh i am gonna leave it to our lovely players to introduce themselves and who they're playing starting with d oh hello everyone my name is d and tonight i will be playing donnie powers the adept Next up's Nikki. Hello, I am Nikki, and tonight I will play be playing Gadget Kelly, the fa the face, the speaker, the speaker, the speaker. And last but not least, we've got May. Hi hey everyone, I'm May, and I will be playing Finley and Enox, the wonderful warrior. And uh, beside me, over, other this way, is you, Dart. It's me! Hi! Hello! Uh, I'm Darby, otherwise known as the Codium for the stream. And uh, I'll be playing uh, and and also don't forget and Yeah! Mm -hmm. That's actually of a course, yes. cast list. Uh, my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. uh, beep was my favorite character. Beep beep. Big zig diddly. And I am uh, your other co-DM for this stream. My name is Anita. My pronouns are she, they. And um, let's see. Where did we leave off last time? Darby, would you like to grace us with a recap? Oh, captions aren't on the overlay. That's easy enough for me to fix. I will do that right this second with that. Boop boop. Fixed all. I wouldn't be a tech stream without tech issues. Uh, Darby, where did we leave off? Last time. I. I'm missing my boss. Okay. <laughs> Last time. On time and time again. On time and time again. Gidget. She chats with. Papa, uh, and all shit kind of breaks loose afterwards. Finley, you had just released Drexos. Iris and Lens were like, what the hell is that? Come on. I think it was Lens was just like walking towards you. And then suddenly, yoink, you get pulled backwards. You see Colette again. And Colette's like, you need to go hide in this library over here. Um, Donnie and Gidget have a date, and it was very cute and very sweet. And then they find Paxton freaking out again in front of uh, the statue of Isaac. And then you all get pulled to go into this library where the doors, where, where once the doors are shut, you are told time stops completely. And so you have all the time in the world as long as the doors remain shut. And above it is the inscription The halls take you where you need to be, the shooks. The books show you what you need to see and you all start reading and through reading these books you are transported through space and time to the places that are described within these books these moments these places all of these things just floop for as long as you can keep your eyes open uh last time you journeyed through all these books found a variety of different things made a plan for what you need to do next um, Paxson had just found a solution for fixing the Tower of Time that you all broke in the first session. Uh, and now bringing us in, we are, you are still in the library. You have a set plans that you have want to set into motion. And now it's up to you to decide what you would like to do first. What are y'all doing? Well, didn't we? So, uh, 
I believe we came to some amount of agreement that the first thing we need to do is get a hold of the sword, right? Isn't that what we were talking about? Mm -hmm. So that we can give it to ourselves? Yeah, and the scabbard, because I have to... Right, the scabbard. That's what we were going to do first. I need to wear the scabbard, and then I throw the sword at us, but into the water. What do we need the scabbard for, exactly? If you never had it in the first place? Well, if we want to make logical leaps, um, if the sword was the key to, you know, keeping that person sealed, swords are held in scabbards, so maybe the scabbard was like a containment place for, you know, him, and he would be the start of putting the seal back together. I also thought the scabbard was like magical in a way that like it like could recall the sword or something. Oh, I see. That would be extremely useful. Mm-hmm. And I think Paxton at this point is like, and the the tower. We need to reform the tower, and I think we can use the, uh, this glyph to, to do it. Um, right. As we're all sort of saying that and having that conversation, there's a small, like, table that's... All of you sort of notice it out of your periphery at once. It's very simple. And set on that table are four books. What, what are the titles? Uh, one is... Uh, one of the books says A Sword of Destiny. Another one says A Tower Reformed. Third one says A Life Reinstated. And the fourth says A Child of Two Worlds. Well... I think we know where one of these books needs to end up. Now look at Gidget. Right, I think... Am I the the child of two worlds? Are you? Well, I suppose you don't know this, Finley, but yes. Have you heard of a, a Selkie? Like seal people. Like seal mermaids. Oh, oh right. I swam naked so many times and there were seals around. I was there when you found the sword, actually. But apparently I was there twice. I'm quite confused. That's it a, is confusing. It's a bit of um time shenanigans happening. Um, My dad is from this... He's from an alternate universe or something. Something about when the worlds are lined up correctly, they're able to travel between them. And my my mother is from the world that we're used to. And my father's from another one. Okay. Yeah, I uh confusing, but I think I get it. Um I, I don't think that me being a Selkie has anything to do with it other than that's what my mom my mom was. Yeah. But um Neat. Right. So that's probably in my book. And what were the other titles? A, a sword life of Des- reformed, mm-hmm. a sword of destiny, and a tower rebuilt. A life reinstated, right. a tower reformed, a sword of destiny, a child of two worlds. A life, life reinstated. reinstated. Well, the des- the sword one is definitely you, Finley. Yeah. Um. Would. Life reinstated be you, Donnie, because of your ring friend? Right. Yes, I believe it would be. And I'll pick the book up off the table. I won't open it yet, but I will just grab it. Same. I'll grab what we're determining is mine. I'll pick up mine and turn it over and see if there's something written on the back. 
Uh, on the back of the book, you see that it just says the words, too good to put down, blink and you won't miss it. Does mine say anything on the back? I think she like sees Gidget do that and then does the same thing. Yeah, says the exact same thing. Too good to put down, blink and you won't miss it. Blink and you won't miss it. That's weird, right? I'm opening my book. I'm gonna start reading. <laughs> oh, okay, well. All right. <laughs> Straight on forward. God bless Finley. All right. <laughs> Finley, you open the book and it reads Finley Enoch, a warrior without a weapon, finds themself finds herself in a fight. And you feel yourself getting pulled in. And you look up and you're in this in this almost arena, but the stands are empty. And in front of you is this, it's almost like shimmering, but this insect-like creature before you. Uh, its body, it's not like it's shiny and like metallic, it's almost like light rippling off of water. Uh, it's sort of distorted in places. Uh, as you are facing this creature, it chitters at you, cocks his head, and then charges. So like aggressive then, it's acting aggressive. We can oh, yeah. go sort of take a 10 this, on that. You kind of look at this uh, stadium that's around and portions of it look as though they're ancient. And a lot of the very old portions, you see like a banner and you see this creature uh, before it turned its head towards you was like feasting upon this, this banner. And as it feasted, this banner almost disappeared as though it is eating this point in time, piece by piece. And it looks at you and chitters, and almost like, like the insectoid thing almost like, like looks at you inquisitively, and then it, it moves at you very fast. Um, in fact, make me a speed roll. Uh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say her, her, her idea would be to dodge. So this is going to be a speed defense. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a 12 or higher. Um, I have a thing for running. Um, I have a skill in running. So would I, would that knock it down to 10? Uh, absolutely it would. Um, cool. A running would knock it down to nine, actually. Nine. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's an eight. Um, I'm going to spend a, a point so that it, I pass. <laughs> so that it knocks it down to a six even further? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Yes, um, it lunges at you, and you sort of dodge out of the way uh, as it this sort of mandible almost comes down on you. Uh, it hits a rock, uh, and that rock just turns to dust. Oh, bad bug. That's a bad bug. Um, I think she's going to look around for her friends and be like, Gidget, Don Donnie Paxton, my, okay, running solo in here. Okay, got it. Uh, are there any weapons around? Anything? Uh, you see, make me a intellect test. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be a hard one. It's probably a, it'll be a six or higher. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, easily enough, uh, you actually see a rusted sword. Not your sword. Ooh. 
Uh, yeah. Just, uh, but it's it's pretty old. It's pretty rusty. Okay. Well, she, I think she'll run and grab that just to have something while she figures out her plan of escape. Because that seems like a better idea than trying to fight this thing. Okay. Um, Knowing your enemies 101 is like paying off so hard right now. Like, thank you, college. I will say that uh, this creature, uh, uh, you're going to, uh, so you grab the sword and this creature looks at you, chitters, and then it mm -hmm. shimmers out of existence. What the? I think once again, she's like on her guard waiting for it to like pop back up and do some like weird magical bug stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like very prepared and taking the like defensive position. Okay. Uh, you're in a defensive position. Uh, I'm going to ask you to make another speed test as it phases back into existence directly behind you and attempts to bite you with the mandibles. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty. It'll be a 12 or higher, but because you said that you were preparing yourself, putting yourself into a defensive position and you have running, uh, it is going to mm -hmm. knock it back down to a 6. Cool. Instead of 12. So it's a 5. Um, I'm going to use another speed point. I want to win. Okay. You sort of dip out of the way just again. Uh, it catches the blade of the sword. Mm -hmm. And the sword vanishes. Oh. Never liked that sword. <laughs> I didn't want it anyways. It's just a same punching and kicking or uh, out if, of the if equation. You, like, uh, you can use your. Uh, you can. You, you've got. It's your turn now. What would you like to do? Oh boy. Um. It's a look for the exits kind of situation. Like there is a tunnel that leads uh, into this the under area of this coliseum. Um, I think she's going to sort of start heading that way. Um, trying to sort of run erratically, I guess, in a way that's like, I don't know, or maybe just sprint. Um, but okay. it's like last time she wanted to get out of a situation, she blinked really hard. You, so I think while she's running, she like blinks blink as hard as she can. Really hard? Nothing happens. You were still oh, in this place. Shit. Yeah, so it's just dead sprint time. Okay, uh, make me a speed test. Uh, okay. This is going to be difficulty four again to try and get away. Nine. Okay. Uh, that is not enough. Uh, you you run and you see this. You sort of look over your shoulder as you're blinking. It disappears again, and it bears down on you and bites on your arm with the, these with these mandibles. Um. Okay. Is my arm still there? Your arm is still there. And you find yourself phased out of this of this coliseum, and you are now in you're now in what looks like a hall of mirrors. Is the bug still with me? The bug is still with you, uh, and it has drawn you into this room uh and as it lets go of you you shimmer for a second and then you find yourself in the stands of this coliseum again Uh, so, uh, you're in this, it's it, it sort of, you're a little bit higher up and you begin to sort of fall backwards, landing 
flat on your back in the stands of this coliseum. Oh, okay. Uh, you are going to take uh, five points of damage, and you are prone. Great. So great, five great, points great, are going great, to come great. out of one of your pools. Okay, that's going to come out of the might pool. Soak it up. Yep. Uh, you feel okay. like your chest trying to get that breath of air as you are dazed uh, and your actions are hindered. And the bug is still with me, I assume? Uh, the bug let you go and you can sort of see it at this you sort of look up and you see it in the stands sort of above you like beginning to sort of worm its way down these stairs. Okay. I think it is get up and Okay, so it bit me and it didn't like disappear, but the sword did. Uh the sword I'm gonna go did. fight this thing. You gonna try and punch him? I'm gonna try and punch him. Okay. Make me a might test. Uh this difficulty is gonna be it's gonna be twelve again. Mm -hmm. uh, you are trained uh in all weapons and in unarmed, so that does reduce the difficulty down to a 9 from a 12. Okay. Alright, come on. Come on, 20. I got an 18. An 18? Yeah, we okay. take that. Uh, so that actually gives you a that gives you a boon, I believe. If you give me a second, <gasps> I can tell you what that can do for me. Um, An 18 can add two additional points of damage. Do whatever you roll on your d6, I believe, for your punchy punch. Uh, yes, d6, because my fists and kicks are mm -hmm. medium. Up, yeah. Okay, so that's a four. Okay, so that's uh, six points of damage. Uh, you cr make a crack in this chitinous armor of this creature, and it sort of reels back and hisses, uh, and uh, it it begins to sort of skitter back up the stairs and it vanishes again. It's going to try that same sort of attack from behind circumstance. Um, oh, hell no. I'm going to kick its ass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, make me a speed test uh, to try and uh, dodge it. Uh, now that you sort of know the tricks, um, I'm going to say that this does reduce the difficulty one step further. Okay, I was also going to say, I am trained without armor, so... You absolutely I'm are. trained in speed defense tasks when not wearing armor. Absolutely, so. you are. So that means that uh, it does reduce it even further. So it's uh, it's gone from a 12 to a 9 with your uh, speed defense to a 6 with your specialty in running to mm -hmm. a 3. To a 3. Oh, heck no yeah. Way. Watch me roll a 1. Okay, that is cocked. Oh, it's a two. I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. If you want, you can spend another point from your speed pool. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. To knock it down to from a three to a, I believe it's a one. Uh, it's a zero to a routine. Yes, I, I'm going to do that. You sort of roll, you, you're you on your back and you sort of roll as these mandibles uh, come down on top of you. Um, and... Darby's just reenacting what's happening. Darby is reenacting what's happening. Shitting bricks, fighting for my life. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You're doing so good. Um... And, uh, okay. You sort okay. of, uh, you're gonna, are you gonna try and use your movement to sort of get up and, and try and, like, wrestle this thing? What are you doing? What's the plan? Yeah, I kind of want to, like, grapple it. Yeah. You know, weird. Yeah. Grapple it. Like, I want to take it to the mat and just, like wrestling move it i don't know i don't yeah. know fighting words fighting words all right i'm gonna say um make me a might test uh this mm -hmm. difficulty 
Uh, so it's going to be difficulty 3, so you'll need a 9 or higher, because you're trained in all weapons, armed and unarmed. 13. Perfect. That's exactly what, it's better than what you needed. Um, so, uh, roll me your, roll me your d6 for damage. Uh, four again. Four again. Okay. Uh, so this one, uh, doesn't have the additional six on it, so it's just, uh, all right, you've done ten damage to it so far. Great. Um, this, this creature sort of, like, backs off of you. Mm -hmm. And, like, realizes that you might be giving it a little bit more trouble than you're worth. Yeah. And it begins to sort of, like, slink back and vanish again. Oh, so now, now it wants to hide. First it wanted to cause trouble, now it wants to hide. Mm -hmm. Unacceptable. I'm going to destroy it. Are you going to... Uh, uh, so... There is this whole Colosseum area if you'd like to explore it. Oh, okay. So it is going to leave me alone. It is going to leave you alone, at least for now. All right. So okay. So you more trouble than you're worth. I 100% am. So <laughs> I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just like it's explorer time, but like staying really, really like vigilant um, because this thing does like to pop up behind me. So um trying to figure out where I am, why I am, when I am. You sort of uh stand up and you're in this Colosseum area and you're in the stands right now. There isn't like just sort of an exit uh that you have to walk down some stairs to like almost like a little atrium area mm -hmm. that would take you into the interior of this Colosseum. Yeah, I'd probably yeah follow that. Are there other like debris from like people having been there, or is it pretty clean? It looks or like run down. Been, it looks like it's almost pristinely clean. Like anything that would have crumbled or been wiped away from the passage of time. It looks like whatever this creature was, it was just feasting on whatever was left over. But you Great. hear off just a little ways the sound of almost like metal hitting metal. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go towards that because um, if there's someone else here, I mean, they're going to fight them or beg them for help. All right. Easily enough, you sort of make your way down to this atrium, and after, like, make me an intellect test. We'll see how quickly you can find it, the se the source of this noise. Okay. What do I need to beat? Um, Make me... It's going to be a 15 or higher. That's a 15 exactly. Perfect. Not just noticing where this sound is coming from. You follow it, and at a certain point, with that 15 perception, essentially, you sort of look off to the side, and you can see that same creature almost, like, stalking a little through here. But eventually you make your way into mm -hmm. this underneath and you first you be, you feel a heat of and like you can smell almost like a kind of a like a sulfury smell a metallic like it's sort of high in your nostrils there's definitely the smell of like chemicals and flux and also heated metal you hear hmm. this pounding of metal on metal it's a lot louder now as you sort of get closer towards it, this the creature that was sort of stalking you, this insect-like being that was sort of stalking you, sort of backs off and disappears into the shadows. Good. I flip it off. 
And as you move into this other area, Darby, would you like to... Yeah. You see... You see a starry figure bent over an anvil, hammering away at something metallic that they're holding in one hand, gloves covering arms, but you see the back of their neck, this dark blue skin, almost like twinkling spots on it as they hammer. Um, excuse me? Par 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 pardon? Hammering stops. Go, let's go up. Yeah. Turn around. Ah! You're here. Finally. Hi. Hi. Do, do we know each other? I'm going to feel really bad if we've met and I forgot. I know you. But you don't know me yet. Okay. Time, time things, you know. Okay. Or we've met, but not you currently. It's complicated. I'm going to trust that because so many things are. As you found out, not everyone can be trusted. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Um, can you be? Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, There's a lot laugh. of squinting, just like. Yeah. I have been. I've made you something. It's new now, but. I think you'll find it's quite familiar. And they'll take the, the thing that they've been hammering, they plunge it into a bucket of water uh, and then pull it out. And you see a very familiar sword in their hands. I, I do like it. I do mm -hmm. like that sword. I mean, you're the one I'm making it for. Uh, but really, you're, yeah, but you're not supposed to have it just yet. See, the version you had originally was corrupted. Someone else got to it in the interim. Uh, but this is sword as it's always meant to be. It's true form. You can't take it with you now. But, and they hold it, handle out towards you. The sword needs to know you now, so that it has always known you. And so that you have always known the sword that it's supposed to have been. And then take it from a different moment. When the sword has lost itself. Okay. Hello, sword. My name is Finley. Um, I'm a sword glows. Oh, okay. I um, um I go to college, and I I play cyclone ball. And you mentioned of cyclone ball, it glows a little brighter. Okay, the sword likes. Okay, that's cool. The sword gets all. Okay, that's neat. Also, if that bug thing is yours, I did hurt it, and I'm sorry about that. Unless oh. it's not yours, in which I'm not sorry. You want to take this? It's, it's kind of just there. Don't worry about it. It's more of a, a test for you. Oh. Okay. I didn't study for this test, so um, it's a little bit harder, but I think I passed. Anyways, the so sword, I, um, I, uh, should I touch it? Am I allowed to touch it? Yeah, you should. Okay. okay. And she, like, very slowly, like, puts her hand on it, like, 
this is my sword. We're going to be pals one day. Yep, you, you do put your hand on the sword. Um, and uh, it it glows. You put your hand on the sword, it glows. It, you, it reacts to you. I got you, Darby. Um, uh, also, that thing's not mine. Uh, it, it, it is kind of here. They feast on time disturbances. Uh, and this whole pocket is due to be... Like, you know how uh, when the past is gone... You can't go back to a place you went before in the same way, ever, really. I think I read about that in my textbook. Congratulations, Darby. I'm so proud of you. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it eats time disturbing. It, it, you look like a tasty meal. You're not supposed to I mean, to I am either. a snack. So... Uh, I, Listen, I know I look good. Uh, oh. Attraction as... I suppose that is a different kind of hunger. Anyways. The... Oh, okay. I see what you said. Not it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, did, I hit it real hard and it backed off. So that was good. Um, I like that the sword likes me. Does it like me? How do I know? Sword, how do I know if you like me? It just glows it's like there's also this warm feeling that sort of comes with it oh, okay. kind of like, like a hug oh i like hugs it's like a sword hug but not the bad kind that makes you bleed <laughs> i like that the uh the, the forge master i guess for lack of a better term um can i have it back Oh, yeah, sure. Um, he here you go. What's your name? I feel like it's rude. I said, uh, my name is Finley. You're making me a sword. I feel like we should know each other or something. Um, I don't something. really have a name. Uh, okay, do you want one? I mean, I'm, if you want to give me one. Okay. Um... I'll call you Orion. Okay. Like the stars. Oh. Yeah. It's a little on the nose, but um, they're beautiful. I mean, I have stars You're on beautiful. Nose. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also have stars on my nose. So, yeah, it is a little on the nose. See? Right there. It's a little on the nose. <laughs> yeah. That's a little celestial That's cute. for you. I um, love that. Um takes the sword back and places it in this scabbard. This has to go to someone else for a time. Is it me from a different time? No. Okay. Um, you, you'd know him. Uh, kind of talks in weird riddles, strangely deep voice. He's gonna ask you to free him, or he asked you to free him. Time's weird. Oh, yeah. That was a big old oopsie. Yeah, that's okay. These things were meant to happen. Oh, okay. So I am fulfilling like a prophecy. I mean, so I did do something right. right. I did do something. Right. I see. I said that. Well, I mean, you did something real that. wrong. Real, real wrong. Um, but it was for the right reasons. Does that make sense? More or less. So this has got to go to him for a little bit. Um, but... You'll be able to get it again. Um, How do I get it again? I mean, there's a whole bunch of time when he doesn't have it. Before you have it. True. Okay. But you've also got to return the sword to you so that you have it. I did see that in a book. Yes. Okay. Does um, that make sense what I just said? Or... Yeah, actually. Okay. Oh, you found our library. I did. My um, friend told me about it. Paxton? 
Or was it Gidget or Donnie? Oh, uh, Col Colette. Oh, Colette. I like yeah. Colette. Me too. She's... I haven't met her, but I see she's nice. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, anyways, can you come with me? And, like, help my friends and I? No, I have something else I have to do. Okay. Uh, it was nice seeing you. It was nice meeting you and seeing you. It was nice um, seeing you again. Um, it's not the last time you see me, but this is the last time I'm going to see you. Why does that sound so sad? It's okay. Okay. Don't worry about it. I might anyways. But I'll try not. I mean, I just met you. I don't know why I'm feeling an attachment already. So. I I have that effect on people. I believe it. Um, blinking doesn't work here, but mm -hmm. you should have everything you need. Just gotta close the book. Am I holding the book? Suddenly it's in your hands. Oh, shit. God, this weird time stuff. Um, is there anything else I need to know? To defeat the bad guy? To get the sword? To have the sword? And then give myself the sword? And also make sure my friends don't die? And that time isn't ruined? Trust yourself, Finley. Okay. Thanks. She closes the book. You find yourself back in the library with Donnie and Gidget. And in your hand, <laughs> it's not a sword. Hmm. But you have a little crystal that almost looks like a star in your hand. Oh. And Hi, guys. Uh, you've got a, you've got another, uh, it looks like a little bottle with a stopper. Mm -hmm. Inside is sort of a swirling dark blue liquid. Okay. And that's, so it's in one hand, I have a stone that's shaped like a star mm -hmm. and a little bottle with a stopper with a dark blue liquid. Um, and I will put in the chat exactly what these are, because these are your ciphers. <gasps> My ciphers! Two of the three of them. Um, Roll uh, credits. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. it, everyone. Bye! <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, so that's one of them. Oh. Am I still having taken five damage? I need a you excellent sent that just to me. Oh, just to you? Okay, well then, never mind. Let's. Uh, let's <laughs> uh, I, meant, I meant to click Finley, but I did not. So we will send that. So this is the potion. Ooh. And. Uh. And then that's the other one. Ooh. That's lovely. That's lovely. Finley's now going to find a comfortable chair and try and rest a moment because she's in pain. Uh, you actually, if you like, um, you can... Uh, as part of the cipher system, you can take uh, what is affectionately known as a short rest, mm -hmm. uh, 10 minutes. Uh, a 10 minute rest will get you, I believe, uh, you can roll a d6 to heal back some of your pools. Okay, and I get a plus one to my recovery rolls. Absolutely. Okay, and I rolled a five, so I'm back to normal within 10 minutes then awesome 
Okay. You sort of like take a deep breath, steady yourself a little bit. Also, um, any time that you have been uh, spending uh, speed from your pool, you should be marking those off as well, and that should be going down as well. Yes, they are. The number is getting smaller, and I dislike it. <laughs> That's another reason for you to do longer rests. I believe if there's a 10-minute, an hour-long, a 8-hour, uh, and a 24-hour that you can use to regain uh, hit points as you go. Okay. And I think those are marked down on your character sheet as well. Yes, yeah, so I've taken a 10-minute. Okay. But if you'd like to take okay. like a, no a longer power nap for like an hour to get back a little bit more of some of your other pools, you can absolutely do that. Um, I'm going to wait for everyone just because yeah. I want us all to nap together, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, so that way it's puddle. not like like a cuddle puddle. Um, <laughs> but this way Finley's not the only one that's just like, hey, I'm going to take a quick snooze. Y'all do what you need to do win the war, fight the evil. But I'm just going to nap real quick. So. Absolutely. Uh, who's next? Who wants to open their book? Who wants to practice fine? Rock, paper, scissors, four? I think, um, it's fine if you do. Alright. <sighs> uh, if I die for some reason, there are instructions on how to wear my suits before you donate them. Those are very important. Um, oh, and I'll... I'm tailored. Don't worry. Appreciate that. Um, and I'll flip open the book for a life reformed question. A life mm -hmm. restored. Restored. Right. Reinstated. 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 Right. There you go. <laughs> you got right. it. How many words that start with R can we go through? It's re um, something. We know that much. Re 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 do re do. Cola. Um, so I open Yum. the book. You open the book. Yeah. Read the lines. Amelie spent her childhood playing on the streets with her friends. And you, as you read these words, you look up and you see a group of young children playing in the streets of this town. Not unlike our players' homes. Technology, light, lampposts, cars. And they're running around playing as children do some nonsensical game where suddenly someone's the hero, but then someone argues, and then someone else is the hero, and they're all the heroes, and there's no villain, but then someone has to be the villain. They're all running around playing I see one child who looks like a much younger version of that charcoal drawing that you had tucked away in your brain. Uh, no. Go ahead. You, were you... No, no, go, go, go. Um, I'll just sort of who who's the the kid that's uh begrudgingly going to be the villain? Someone dark, too dark, uh braided, like not pigtails per se, but there's like in Green Gable like sort of look. Uh overalls, um kind of smudged dirt on the face. Uh, and they go, I mean, I guess I'll be the, I'll be the bad guy, but I was a bad guy the last three times. Something else is darn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I suppose I'll just continue to watch. I don't really want to go up to a bunch of children I don't know. <laughs> so I, I guess I'll just like observe spe specifically the the child that I could assume is Amelie or is some kind of uh, theirs. Mm -hmm. 
And she's sort of sitting a little bit away from the rest of the group, kind of watching them like she wants to join in. But is just kind of keeping a distance, like a guarded shy distance almost. Mm. Um, is, do I still have my ring? Yeah. Can I feel anything at the moment? There's like a, a little sense of... A little sense of nostalgia paired with Paired with, like, you know, how when you're remembering an embarrassing moment and you almost have that internal cringe, there's, like, a little bit of that. And you see that uh, this, the little, uh, the little girl that looks like Amelie, Amelie's hair was, like, a little bit longer, um, though, like, sort of neatly braided. Uh, this little girl looks like uh, just got the worst haircut of her life and just has that sort of like is also shy but like really embarrassed to be seen by people huh. are you um, I'll just like say absentmindedly not take my eye off the, the kids um, but I'll say to the ring um are you going to join your friends? Not without a little prompting. How old were you here? About seven or eight. I remember getting that bad haircut. It's a pretty bad haircut. My mother said that it would frame my face nicely, but it makes me look like a mushroom. Yes, that was certainly a miss, but it happens to all of us. Never again. I didn't. Never got another one of those again. Oh, I wouldn't probably. let her. I wouldn't let her hear the end of it afterwards. But you see, it's sort of like if you look just slightly over, she's she's she wants to play. You can tell because I have. Behind my back right now. You sort of look and you see this wooden sword that's been like pieced together from two sticks with like a nail. I wonder what's stopping her from going to play then. She's shy and embarrassed. <laughs> She's also new to town. Kids are mean. The kids are mean. Is there a reason I'm being shown this? Uh, not that it's not nice. You shouldn't even be here right now. This time, this space shouldn't exist. Part of the sacrifice was losing this world that you're in. So then, perhaps we can uh, reinstate you. I mean, perhaps perhaps it's not all gone. Maybe that's what the book means. Perhaps. Perhaps it's a matter of collecting things. Memories. Moments. Things that hold attachments like the photo. I felt, when you found the photo, I felt something like a tether, a reconnection. Well, of course. That's all the life is, is the memories, the connections that we build with each other. Even the small ones. Sometimes people I could, need a little bit of courage, you know. 
Yes. I don't know about you, but I always got my courage from my friends. And I'll walk over to Child Amelie. She sort of looks up at you wide-eyed, like... I... Hi. Who are you? Uh, my name's Donnie. You just moved here, right? Yeah. You wanna go play with the other kids? Maybe. Well, you can't play with them over here. But what if they don't like me? My hair is... My hair is really bad. You look kind of like a mushroom. Yeah. But people like mushrooms. It's on all kinds of pizzas. Mm, I don't like fungi. Fungi. Yeah, you are a fungi, but what does that have to do with mushrooms? (laughs) Nothing, darling. Um, Some of them may not like you, but... The worst thing that happens if they don't like you is you don't end up with any friends, right? This is horrible. Well, if you stay over here, you definitely won't make any friends. I guess that's Besides, that's a pretty cool toy you've got behind your back. Don't you want to share it with them? Yeah, I, I made it. My mom helped me pick out the, the wood and I found a nail to stick them together. That's, uh, c- can I see that for just a minute? Yeah. I'll give it right back. And I'm gonna use a little ma- magic to just, just bend the nail down so that there is not a sharp nail poking out of this thing that a child is about to play with. It was like mad jagged too. It was like a rusty. Yeah, ass just nail. gonna just just just. It's like wipe bent that at the. Over. It's like not fully all the way in either. Like very clearly, it looks like someone took a rock and like banged it in. Kind of crinkled at the top. Yeah, I want to just like just bend that down so it's not a sharp edge. There you go. Thank you. You want candy? I'm okay. You should give some candy to your new friends. Okay. I'm gonna go now. Bye. <laughs> she Bye. runs off, sword in hand. This this is definitely a sword, not an axe. As she says, uh, she was reaching in her pocket to grab a piece of candy out when she asked you if you wanted a candy uh and when she runs off to get her friends one of the one of them falls out and lands sort of on the ground in front of you it's like a little plastic wrapped bonbon it's one of those i'll grab it good taste and um I'll I'll say to the Amelie in my ring, like, I don't know if that will ruin anything, but I'm not going to regret doing it. You should. As you're staring, you blink for a second. You open your eyes, and in front of you, a different scene. You see an older Amelie with a thankfully different haircut. Uh, This one looks to be about a teenager. Uh, You're sort of peering in. You're you're watching as she is sitting kind of in like a cafeteria setting, like a mall almost, a food court. That's the word I'm looking for, a food court. Uh, 
sort of staring absentmindedly while there's some people around her chatting. Uh, friends looks to be about her age. So occasionally she'll nod her head or she'll pipe in, like say something, but then kind of fades back out, tension drifting, and she stares and just watches people walking by. Some old habits are hard to break. Um, say to the Amelie in my ring. Sometimes. Sometimes when you're a teenager, you think you're more important than other people. That I can relate to. No one, un no one quite understands you. Of course. You're different than everyone who's come before. Exactly. Which is somehow no true and also and full of completely hormones, false. Ever. No, no, never once. How about... Let's do this a bit differently. Um, and I'll sort of, using the ring as the focus, I want to activate my distortion field so that I am basically invisible, if not just like a shimmer. Okay. Um, and I kind of want to go for more of like a conscience talking to you type angle. Cricket on the shoulder. Yeah going to be for Amelie what Amelie is to you? Yeah! It's, it's a good idea that I'm borrowing from a friend. <laughs> um, and I'll just approach and say um, Does it ever get lonely? She sort of starts, looks around. Lonely. Sitting here by yourself. Uh, hello? Sitting here by yourself. Does it ever get lonely? Is this, is this a, a trick? Don't you wish, or even a second, that you could connect with them instead of being so separate? Did Ani put someone up to this? What's going on? It's your conscience speaking. Really, dear girl. We need to work on your intuition. Uh, if you're my conscience, then... Aren't you supposed to be telling me what I'm doing wrong then, other than sitting around being lonely? Well, shouldn't you know if I'm lonely if you're my conscious? If you're a portion of me, I guess. It was more of a rhetorical question. Mm. Um. Then. I shouldn't answer? And, um. I will just th think to myself, which the Amelie in my ring can hear my mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, not to say, you make us look easier than it is. I mean, honestly, I didn't really want to listen to anybody at this point in time of my life. 
an invisible voice that only I can hear? Really? Listen, I didn't want to just be some college age person who just showed up in a high school fucking, well, not necessarily a high school, but. Oh no, this is um. This is a, a kind of a market. Uh, for like yeah, like a food for. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Amelie's kind of explain. It's kind of like a what you have on the vertex, like a market, but. Uh... But like all the market it's stores are everything. in one building. Um, it's like a market if it were super. That's a different thing. Or an open air bazaar. I'll drop the distortion. Boo. What? Why do you look familiar? Also, how did you do that? That's incredible. Do what? No, you just appeared out of nothing. That's like magic, and that doesn't... That's not real. Hey, no, that doesn't sound like something I'd do. Listen. Guess I have... Teenager. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I wanted to talk to you. Um, I look familiar because... I'm a friend. And you help me in the same way that I am trying to help you, but I'm not as good at it, so just kind of kind of bear with me here, right? Just 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 roll with it. Um, so you're sitting by yourself, right? No friends? Well, I mean I have friends. Like? Well, I mean, it was Ani, but she was kind of being a, a bit of a witch, and we got to a bit of fight, and I don't think she's speaking to me anymore. It's horrible. And you don't think? Oh, never. Well, that's more understandable. I think it'd be worth it to try and talk things out. You think? The bonds we make are all we have. Uh, all right. Um, you seem so familiar, and I can't quite put a finger on it. Um, all right. I'll. I'm gonna go see if she's willing to talk. Um, and, uh, I'll also ask Amelie, like, what, what else did you think you needed to hear at around this age? Um, <laughs> I mean... God, what did you need to hear about this age? What did I need to hear? It's something far too mean to say to this person. And sometimes people can do with a little bit of mean. If you really like me, then I feel sorry for you. Listen. Kid. Excuse Sometimes you are a child, a child, and that means that you're allotted a certain amount of grace. You will make mistakes. It is unavoidable. One of a very few number of things in this world that are, but that ego and that pride that sits in your chest when you know you're arguing something that, frankly, you're wrong about. Sometimes you have to let that go, or you could lose people that mean a lot to you. And that will never, ever be worth it. 
You might end up the one who's right, but you'll also end up the one who's by themselves. So call your friend. All right. He sort of stands up. Grabs like a small shopping bag. All right, I'll go talk to them. Good. And if you need anything else, just, um, I don't know, start keeping a diary. Start keeping a diary. Yeah. Get your thoughts out of your head. It helps. Okay. Mysterious disappearing stranger, reappearing stranger. Hey, no problem. That's what I do. And you can call me Donnie for the record. Donnie. Disappearing stranger was my father's name. Stands up. Turns and begins to walk away. It's a blink, and the scene changes once again. You see an adult, Amelie. This one. Seems more sure of herself. You see her, uh, this memory passes not in seeing a single moment, but there's some moments leading up to it. You see her joining, her being recruited out of, uh, out of her higher education into this special program, going through training uh, months after months. You see her being paired with a figure, looks oddly like a statue that you've seen before. They're being, going through her training again. And you see her writing in this diary. Uh, in the moments in between training, you see her sitting in the barracks writing in this diary, going through mission training, going back this diary that you see becoming, the pages becoming more and more filled uh, until you finally stop at a moment where she's sitting on a park bench. Daylight, going through dapple tree leaves She's sitting and writing on, in her diary. Amelie. How's it going? Donnie? You remembered. Flat. Not to forget the person that disappeared and reappeared in front of you. My greatest magic trick. Magic isn't real. That's why it's a trick. Um, I followed your advice. Good. Has it been worth it? I think so. It's good to get your thoughts out. Good. How did things go with, um, I don't know if you remember at this point, but 
Arnie? Not a thing. Yes. We dated for a bit, and uh, then we broke up, and then I went into his program. Hello, Raiders. Welcome. Hey. That is certainly how it goes sometimes. Sometimes. I have a hundred stories like that. What exactly is this program? It's some sort of, it's, it's kind of military, a little. Uh, hush, hush. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Uh, where? supposed to be um there was uh some sort of um i mean i guess we're old friends some sort of anomaly hmm We're being sent to investigate it. And what's your gut telling you? Gut's telling me that if I play by cards right, I might make a promotion. But it's pretty high risk. And when you think about the risk you took eventually dating your friend, do you find that the risk, those types of risks are worth it? I find they often are. You learn things, even if you make mistakes. Well. You are officially further ahead on the course than I am. Still struggling with the not being a perfectionist bit myself. That is a hard nut to crack. And Donnie will suddenly... Uh, Donnie will just like raise a finger like hold on and we'll get up and go try and find a vending machine sure. to get drinks yeah. just just to like like can whatever's that all, all they had was apple juice and something else so cheers i like something else there you go to taking new risks. Cheers. You know, I hate to ask you this, mm -hmm. considering how much you've already helped me, but I need some guidance. There is someone that I've taken quite a bit of a shine to. Um, they know me for a certain persona. And I'm trying to figure out how to break away from that. Break from the bullshit version of yourself that you've built up? Yeah. Essentially. I think that if they liked you the way that you want them to like you, then they probably would already know it's a facade. Hmm. Pretty smart, that one. So that wouldn't overly surprise me. And I think they might just be waiting for the other shoe to drop for you to actually show your real self. You are... One of the wisest people I've ever met. Hmm. You know that. Well, apparently I learned it from 
a mysterious stranger who keeps according, uh, apparently showing up in my life. I think... I think you were always wise. It's just that occasionally people need some encouragement from I their mean, friends. Honestly, that last bit was mostly because I've got a friend like you. Oh, really? Yeah, he's full of bluster. Doesn't quite know where whether he's coming or going most days. Compared to Gary, those are quite Lord a Helmy. handful. Well. Do you need any more uh, nuggets of information before I do the head back, actually? No, no, I, um, I suppose not, but, um, and I'll sort of, like, put a hand on the shoulder and say, whatever happens on the lake, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you either. That's a interesting ring. Do you like it? Got Family. A with one like it. Really? Yeah. One I told you about earlier. The one that's mm. a lot like you. Maybe you are family. Stands. Um, I won't be able to take this where I'm going. Could you hold on to it for me? Yes. And I'll take it from, from them. All right. Take care of yourself. Be honest with the person you like. That part will probably be a bit harder. You see, it, you hear that sort of voice in your mind that says, I am right. All right. I don't need it in stereo. I get it. <laughs> There's a note in there for you if you open it. She walks away. I'll open it suspiciously. When you open it, you find yourself back in the library. <clears throat> Fucking books. And on that note, we're going to cut to our first break. Uh, we're going to be right back. We're going to take about five minutes uh, and uh, ten minutes. We'll do human things and we are going to be back after these messages. There's no messages. We're just going to be right back. See you soon. Drink water.
And we're back. Hello. Hello. Welcome into the second half. Time and time again. Welcome. Donnie, so. you find yourself back in the library with your friends. Piece of candy in one hand. A diary the book. in the other. Well, that was disorienting. I think it worked, though. These should be useful somehow? Right. Um, oh, I guess that means it's my turn. I think it was... I think it was quite successful. You sort of look over your shoulder, actually hearing that. And you see that there's a... That same sort of paper version of Amelie, but a little bit more constituted. Less, oh, less like ever shifting pieces, but the pieces are now almost a little bit more firmly in place, and you all see this. Uh, everyone, this this is my friend Amelie. It's nice to meet you. I'm 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 Gidget. Hello, I'm I'm Finley. Gidget, uh, Donnie talks a lot about you, Gidget. All right. Okay. I'm sure he does. I'll. All right. Okay. Fine. Fine. I do. I enjoy your company. Right. It's my company that you enjoy. Well, among your many companies. Things. Yeah, your company is enjoyable. Thank you, Finley. Mm -hmm. How are you here like this? Ooh. Well, I think you pulled enough of me out of the nothing that I'm able to take a little bit of the form. It's not much. Right then. So it is possible. You both, you all sort of look. Um, um. I, I mean, I feel a little bit more like me, but something else feels a bit off. And Gidget, you sort of feel it too when she mentions that. It almost feels like a little bit of a... a disconnect. Like there's two parts of yourself that seem to be at odds with each other. Does anybody else feel an uncanny feeling of like part of you is here and part of you is somewhere else? I feel like all of me should be somewhere else. Uh, also, Donnie. I just... Yes? Um... I am going to DM you 
two items that you have now, as you have a yes. candy and a diary. Um, that's the first one. Okay. Oh, so interesting. Also, um, there is uh, something else in your pocket. It's a bottle of a strange blue liquid. Oh! And with the book... That's from the book. You sort of flip open that page where there would be a note and you see a glyph inside. Uh, and Darby, I'm gonna also message you exactly how I altered those uh, items. Understood. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> going into... The books is definitely fruitful. Right, so I suppose it means it's my turn then. Yes. Have Best fun. of luck. You'll do great. I'm gonna open the book, start reading. You read the temple with its wide open floors, its tall ceilings, and the statues of Selkies lining the walls. Gidget walks through the doorway. <clears throat> and you look up and you see exactly as described this temple marbled white marbled floors and these statues of selkies like pillars uh holding up the ceiling that's way above you there's nothing in this temple that you can see except one thing straight ahead it's a small stone it looks like a well almost a pool ahead of you some ways away it's my time feel time <laughs> it's feel time baby uh, <laughs> <Seal time six>. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna um uh zip up her little uh cardigan and put the hood on and as she does that she transforms into an adorable little seal <laughs> little seal zipped up uh, as you sort of approach this well though i will note that along the rim of it there is writing oh uh, i will read that before i go because <laughs> i don't know that i can read as a seal <laughs> you mean, you my it intellect has... goes way down uh, <laughs> it's a polymorph not a wild shape <laughs> yeah basically It says, follow the path you've taken, not the one untraveled. Okay. Um, so I'm going, I'm thinking back to when my, my mother would have taught me how to swim. Um, and does this at all resemble uh, where that had taken place? Very similar, not per but not really. Mm -hmm. it, there's that same sort of... The place that your mother took you looked old. This looks new and untouched. 
uh, do I think that maybe that this is, um, <laughs> I turn around is what's behind me. Uh, the doors you came to. Mm -hmm. Darby, if you want to pick up. Yeah. The note said to go where I've been. It says, follow the path you've taken. Uh, follow the path you've taken, not the one untraveled. And you... But you sort of look down into this well and you see that it... The water is clear, but it's deep. So it gets dark. Deeper down that you go. You can't see the bottom. Hmm. I try the door. The door just opens up to an open field. Right. Well, if it's about being um, a child of two worlds, I suppose it's time to dive in. Uh, and she, and then to the well. Oh, well, leopard, leopard seal. Yeah, seal time. Seal time, baby. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna dive in. While the outside of this pool is purposeful, it's someone made this outer rim. As you start diving down, it's more like a natural ravine uh, in the oceans. It's jagged walls with with underwater sea life clinging to its rocks, the kelp and the weeds drifting. You see some fish swimming around, darting amongst the walls. I consider the fish for later. Mm -hmm. Get a little snacky snack. A little snacky um, A little snack. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep like swimming down and mm -hmm. around and see if there's some kind of path here. There are multiple paths, kind of. There's one, basically this one large tunnel opening going down. And as you start swimming down, there are some more branching openings up ahead of you. I think she kind of like does that thing of like leans back and kind of just treads where she is and looks at them. And none of this is familiar to me. Not particularly. Um, I'm gonna like sniff the water. As you sniff the water, close your eyes for a moment, let the smells overtake you. You come across a memory in your mind. The first time your mother is teaching you to swim in your homes, the first time you zipped up your hoodie, your cardigan, pulled the hood over and then dived into the water to see almost like if you were, if you didn't know you were underwater, it's like you were flying, seeing the fish zipping by, zooming as if nothing's holding them back, not bothered by gravity, just swimming. And you remember following your mom as she she shows you good places to hide, good places to find delicious, like, scallops and mussels and things. Um, timing on how to go up for air. Uh, you think of that memory. It fades. You still remember it, not like you forget this memory, but the memory sort of passes to clarify. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to like swim. Mm -hmm. You and you find yourself as you open your eyes a little bit closer to one entrance than another. I go to that one. Swim down. 
this is taking you through a tunnel. So as opposed to this ravine where you can kind of see the light filtering in from the temple above, you are going down these tunnels, natural formations and holes in the rock made over time. You go down and down and you reach another bending in the passages. Uh, I'd love for you to make an intellect test for me as you're going down these winding paths. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's say intellect. What do you think needs? Ah, 12. Say a 12. 12. Okay. <sighs> Out of 14. You are a smart. You are a smart. 14? Yeah, I got a 14. In each of these paths, you see there's that memory that of when you were younger and your friend asked to borrow your cardigan. I'm just wearing it for a concert. I'll, I'll bring it right back. She promised. And you had a choice to make. You could have said no. But you wanted to be a good friend. In that moment, you also remember the words from above. Choose the path you've taken. Follow the path you've taken not the one untraveled, and you think about that moment, you could have said no. But instead, you swim down the path in which you say yes. And you realize that heartbreak is sometimes a lesson. You find, have that memory of just being inconsolable for a number of days until you find a neatly wrapped parcel on your doorstep. In that moment you look up and you see just across the street walking by a man that looks vaguely familiar. I didn't get that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I said, Dad returned my sweater. And so I'm at another spot where I need to make a choice. You move. Mm -hmm. You move through again. What's another? Oh, now time? Anita, you can't. We can't hear you oh, now. Can't hear me? <laughs> I saw your hands moving, so I knew you were talking. <laughs> but yeah, if it, when oh, it's not lit Zoom up green, must, you Zoom must be being real weird with the. It things. likes to turn people down. I don't get it. It's it's fucking goddamn Zoom. Just, just like I tell it not to adjust my volume, and it does it anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, you... sorry. So dad dropped it off. Dad dropped it off. You find another path. What's another time that Gidget had to make a choice? Um, she was about, a, a, I don't know, like six months or a year into taking the job as the office manager for this research department. She was offered um, a role in a research department at a different university that would have forced her to move away. Um, and she chose to stay at that school because she had made connections there and because that's where her mother was. You see in this path, the memories, some of them not so glorious of working where you are currently. The long, some of the long shifts, some of the more annoying professors who constantly badger you to just get send them this file again even though they have the file over and over again it's beleaguered students dodging on meetings that you needed them to show up for you see down the other path 
you see yourself it's it's almost like you're glowing you've got this smile about you the cardigan sort of loosely always loosely draped around you uh, as you're walking on the campus of this other school students and professors and people like all waving and smiling at you as you're walking and making your way uh, to your own office your assistant But that's not the life I wanted. So which path do you take? I stay at the university. I take the same path I just took before. Duck down that path. And... This... Guy in a suit shows up at your desk. He's why she chose to stay at the university. Yeah. You see, as you go down this tunnel, Donnie coming up to your desk. Another time, Donnie waiting for you around a corner, smiling in a suit. Holding a cup of coffee. Moments with Yelena where you're chit-chatting and having a grand old time. Moments where students uh, would leave you little things on your desk to thank you. Solving Professors, lots of people's problems. Yeah. Professors sending you thank you cards and Christmas gifts. And moments where, even though the original memory showed you not so glorious moments, the moments that were, the moments you're seeing now as you're going down this tunnel ones of small joy. It's another time Gidget had to make a choice. Uh... I think um, that's a good question. I'm trying to think what's another thing that she would have had to deal with recently. Um, I think maybe her mother gave her um, the option uh, that she could um, get like formally adopted by her stepdad. Uh, so Kelly is her mom's last name. Um, and they approached her about like, he's like, you know, I'm no, I know I'm not your dad and I've been around since you were like four or whatever, but like, I think of you as my daughter. Um, and so she had to make that choice on whether or not she would let him. Um, and she did. She let him adopt her, but uh, she kept her mom's last name. You have the choice of taking, keeping your mom's last name or taking his. She kept her mom's. You keep that attachment. That thing that makes you of the sea. And you push your way through. The tunnel moves up directly. And you find yourself emerging in this very similar to the room that you started in. But sitting in this room is a... two boxes. One simple handmade. The other one 
beautiful gilded. Which one do you pick? She picks the simple one. It, she doesn't even hesitate. She goes over and nudges it open with her little seal nose. You know, nudge it open. And inside you find one of the memories that you had of your time at the university is of a student like stressed like you could tell the student was just ready trying to finish their dissertation they were trying to get finals underway the bloodshot eyes yeah, the dark bags so tired and after you helped them they came back to your desk with a plate of cupcakes peanut butter cupcakes and I finished my exams, I finished my dissertation, and then I baked you these. And All right, um, I'll have one if you have one with me, and then go take a nap. Okay. <laughs> Wait, cheers. Wait, the, the, She'll cheers a cupcake. They eat it, and then they, they fall asleep in the cupcake. She's just like, she just ushers them to like, there's got to be a lounge. Like a <laughs> You've got a couch. cushy chair. You've got a like sofa. a cushy chair in your, yeah. in your little office. Um, just falls asleep. And inside this simple chest are simple memories. The wrapping paper from, the wrapping paper from the return of your coat the peanut butter cupcake uh the um the adoption papers and underneath them all is a glass figurine and a little patch for your jacket. Uh, she looks at them and she's like, what am I gonna, where do I put this? You, real, you realize then, that there's a small pocket on your jacket. If you <laughs> I mean, I was gonna just like work. stick it under my armpit. Yeah, well, I can't put it in my mouth because I gotta go you eat can also, some fish. Uh, And she puts it somewhere safe. You find it. There's we, magic. We, we, you hammer it's space magic. it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. I will send you the things that you get. Uh, there is a, a potion bottle also with a dark blue liquid. Which I will send to you. Uh, Gidget. And, uh, and a cupcake. Uh, and the last thing that you get is that patch, which allows for seal time. I'm gonna roll that, ignore that before it says. Uh, uh, where it says level, uh, it's actually level, um, you can just ignore the level requirements on it. Uh, it's seven for what that's worth. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, she takes all of the things, uh, does it recharge or is it just like a one-time use? One-time use, but the patch is, the patch keeps working. Cool. Um, okay, so she pockets the things. As you close the chest, you find yourself back in the library. I need to eat a fish! Oh, you, I, I'll say, I'll let you, I'll let you, uh, dive in and grab yourself a fishy snack. As you pull yeah. yourself out of the book, there, the chest is still there, and there is, there's a raw fish now flopping on the desk. 
she still in seal form gobbles the fish up in front of everybody. There is now a seal in front of you instead of Gidget. Art. Okay, so I know. Okay, please. Okay, um, you are so cute. Can I? Pet? She'll nod. Okay, and just like gent pat, like gentle pats on the head, and so it's like, oh my god, you're so. You ever see the okay. seal do the thing where they push and it's like, blorp, blorp. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, oh, oh, also the, the no neck there when you neck. saw the sword. Oh. No neck. Nick, this is great. Uh, okay. And Donnie, she goes up, does a wave at Finley. Yeah. Finley's like she does freaking a, out. a kiss at, the at Donnie. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> uh, Paxson sort of like sees all this happen and then picks up the last book, opens it, and disappears. That was different. That was different. Because we didn't go anywhere. Did the book right? go with him? The book slams shut and lands on the table. Well, shit. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> that, it's probably not a good idea. Perhaps since it's tied to the tower, it's different than the other ones? The book that Paxton was holding with the diagram, it's also gone. Wait, the diagram that'll help us rebuild the tower? Yep. Mm -hmm. Left with Paxton. We have to go after him. I mean, let's let's give him some time. Yeah, I mean, we all had our own moments in our books. So... Gidget's still a seal, so she doesn't okay. say anything. I feel like Finley every now and then looks over and is like trying to read the expressions like it's just so cute. A I... seal of approval. <laughs> I mean, this is always as cute as she looks to me, so it's not really new. I mean, she is very pretty. I'm always slightly intimidated. She like waves a little fin at you like, oh, stop. I know. <laughs> I Honestly. figure we're friends. I can tell you that now. So, you know. She knows. Just, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, uh, s assuming I don't need to use this form anymore. Um, with the path, do I see any? You could use this form anytime in the air <gasps> instead of in the water. Hell yeah. <laughs> SEAL okay. Team 6 Airborne Division. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use an intellect point to go back into my normal form. So that's... That's, that's um, three of the four. Cool as hell. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You certainly looked happy. It's quite comfortable being a SEAL, actually. Um, a lot more... Squishy and a lot less joints, <laughs> a lot fewer things to hurt. That's under, um, yes, and Donnie will just turn around. This might not be the most appropriate time. Uh, and I feel like it. We would have discussed it if that had been the um, case. He just sort of goes to Finley. Hey, I think there's a stack of books over this direction. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole library, so why would. Starts, okay, okay, starts, you're physically you're taking going, me now. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, okay, oh. <gasps> uh. <Yeah. laughs> you see Finley literally be like, and like, then she walks off. <laughs> Um, are you seeing anyone romantically? Besides yourself? Oh, I thought that was what was happening here. Uh, yes. <laughs> Going forward, it certainly, I, you thought we were... Well, you said romantically involved. You didn't say that there was any kind of label on it. Just 
romantically involved. Right. I was reminded of a few things, a few choices that I've made to stay at the university and why. Uh, Donnie will grab you by the hand and say, I'm clearly not very good at this. But if you are mine, you will want for nothing. <laughs> You're so good with your words. Yes, that is that is where all the skill points went. <laughs> well, I think this is um, a better time than any, really, to have such a conversation before, you know, we either change the world, the universe, or wreck it all. Well, at least we'll be together. Yes. I suppose we will. Was well, there something else you needed to tell me? I was just also curious about things that are a bit too inappropriate for talking about in the library, but we can discuss those later. Right. <laughs> then, like in the background. <laughs> like Finley, you see like Finley like. It's see definitely Finley and Amelie canon. both like just trying to figure out if it's safe to come back yet. They're holding a book upside down like. You see eyes peeking out from way too high, just like... And occasionally, oh. like, Amelie pushes the head down, like... Oh, right. <laughs> we'll want more privacy for such conversations. We're not watching or anything, it's fine. <laughs> we also didn't hear anything. No, we didn't hear Thank anything or see anything, so you're fine. Definitely Thank you don't too. have that psychic connection again. Mm-hmm. Mm. You have a psychic connection? Oh, yeah. To the room. Oh. Um, Once again, not listening allows, or watching. That's like walkie talkies. Uh, if Gidget allows Donnie to, he will lean in and kiss her on the cheek. Oh, absolutely. And ah! say, Late. Right. All right, you two that totally weren't listening. I believe we should get a move on again. Not technically listening. Or watching mm -mm. or anything. We were looking at these books and she picks up what is clearly like an atlas upside down. It's like, I was reading this. Mm -hmm. What's it called? I don't know. I forgot. What shelf did you get it off of? That one over there. Really? Mm -hmm. the, the full one with no missing books? I'm lying. I don't know how things work and I wanted to see if you guys would kiss or not. Yes, I was. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it is okay. <laughs> Shall we? Now then. Save the world? Right. The idea, I guess. Did you guys know that I can now um, be a seal? What in the air? Oh. I see. So if you think of a reason that that would be helpful, I'm actually stronger as a seal physically as well. So could I throw you like a javelin? That, uh, well. I weigh significantly more when I'm a seal than I do right now. If yeah, you but if you're like flying now. Would you like to try it, Gidget? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gidget, in a fit of whimsy, <laughs> would very much like to try this. You zip up the hood, you zip up the cardigan, you put the hood up, you turn back into a seal, and you begin to go up into the air. It feels like you're underwater. It's that same sort of effortless glide. And Finley, just for funsies, you try to lift up Gidget. Gidget feels like, you know how it mm -hmm. feels when you're holding someone under in the water? How they feel lighter? Yeah. Because there's that natural mm -hmm. buoyancy? It feels like that. So you could oh. potentially throw Gidget. 
<laughs> like a javelin. Oh. She looks down and pats Finley on the shoulder. Okay, let's nods. do this. Donnie, go long. Um. All right. Well, maybe not in the library. Maybe not no, in no. the library. What about like a little one? Like a little one? Uh, I, she's going to point her fins up. Yeah. All right, fine. The, a piece oh, for um, the seal? A piece yes. for the seal. And Finley's going to be like, I do need to touch you. I hope that's okay. Um, okay. And so she kind of just takes her and like aims and just like tries to torpedo her. <laughs> oh, good lord, you're strong. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like sorry, sorry. Rush it over. Nope, it's okay. <laughs> and I will catch if I can, question mark. Donnie's not completely incapable. Make me a, make me a speed test. Sure. I'd also say this wouldn't be a full force throw because no. one, she does not want to hurt Gidget. It's, of course, of course. It's, or Donnie. It's difficulty, like it's a it's a six or higher is what you need to catch. You had to ask me what I got, Anita. Did you get a one? I got a natural twenty. Yeah, you did. E? You sort of catch Gidget and almost redirect. And you launch Gidget back towards Finley, who like catches Gidget without a. Gidget do flips as a yeah, system. absolutely. She's you can doing do, little somersaults you can do in the air. Want uh, D whatever uh, major boon you would like to have happen, you can have happen right now. Um, I I want that moment in like a romance anime, where like as I catch Gidget, I like spin on a he on a heel, and there's just like that one moment where Gidget looks at Donnie, um, and he he looks it's at like you roses. the exact. Exactly. And it's the exact same look of just like sheer adoration. Um, like not even phased by the form change at all. In this in this version, she can blush because it's anime, so why not? It's a little true, leopard seal true. with blushing. All right. <laughs> Did we kill Anita with the cute? <laughs> can I have a weird sweat drop on my forehead because I'm afraid I just yeeted Gidget at Donnie too hard? Yes, absolutely. Thank the you. anime cut. <laughs> we, did, we did the anime cut of this episode. Hundred percent. All right, the world's in danger or something. So, um, Gidget yeah. comes back to normal. A little something extra as well, Donnie. As you're sort of walking, Finley was holding up this atlas, and it, it's open on the floor to a page. And it's the world, it's Vertex, as you recognize it. But it looks as though there are cracks starting to form at certain seams that are glowing. <clears throat> Amelie sort of looks at them. And you feel a sense of dread. I think you fixed me, but I think we might have undone some of the work that I did. Well, then we'll have to get it cracking. Right. We still need to get you a sword, right, Finley? Uh, uh yes. Um, maybe not the sword, but a sword would be helpful. We can get you the sword. I know where to oh. find it. You do? Well, then let's do that. Yeah. Okay. I was quite fond of it, and I was told that it was for me, which is cool. Um, he just says, yep. follow me, and begins to take you between the stacks of the books. So many books. There's actually a few less books on these shelves than before. You remember huh. them being packed. That's weird. 
There's less now. I'll uh, grab Gidget by the hand and um, look over at Finley intently and say, let's fix this, yeah? Yeah. And Gidget will hold out her hand to her other hand to Finley. Okay, thank you. I wanted a hand to hold too. Okay. And she'll squeeze Finley's hand a little tight. Takes her hand. It's it's nice. <laughs> Amelie leads you to a, it looks like a lectern, like a speaker's podium. And on it is a single book. It's title facing towards you. The title says, After the Fall of Drexos. After the First Fall of Drexos. We'll be through Guess we're going to be his second. With any luck. As the book opens, you all step through. That's where we're going to end the session for the night. Goodness gracious. That has been... We had smoochies. We, did we have had smoochies. seal time. Seal time now six. This... Now it's seal, seal time, time anytime you like. True. Hell yeah. Darby LARPed for part of the session, mm -hmm. fighting a bug. <laughs> yep, no, I did. Darby came out on top. We're proud of them. Yes, um, I did. We're proud. Fuck flies. I hate them. <laughs> uh, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. But that's been our show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to go do our outros real quick before we get out of your hair and get back to our evenings. And we will start in reverse order with the lovely Finley and Enox, played by me. Hey everyone, my name is May. My pronouns are she, they. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Maybe Mayhem. Um, I don't have a lot going on right now, just a lot of, you know, just personal stuff, talking about why you shouldn't drink borax. But, um, you know, I have maybe have some future projects coming up. So if you want to, you know, potentially see more of me, keep following me on Twitter until the migration begins. Um, and then I will be updating my social media then. And I or I can popcorn no, it to popcorn someone or did you want to like. Okay, I didn't know if we were being volunteered. Yeah, I will pass it to the lovely Gidget. Okay. Uh hey, uh I was Gidget Kelly tonight, who is our speaker slash Selkie. Um I am Nikki, I use she her pronouns, and we just wrapped uh Fayfair, and so I uh am no longer the producer at TEA TRPG. I am now the creative director of Critical Misses. So hey, um I am so happy to be here. Um Follow me everywhere online as Halfling Nikki. Um, that if I have a if I have a profile on a social media, that's that's the name I will use. Um, so you'll be able to find me there. Um, yeah, that is it. Heck yeah. For me, I have nothing going on but this because I am about to move, so I'm not taking on new projects. Oh wait, I have one more thing. Uh, it's my birthday next Monday, um, and I have a donors choose. So please. Uh, donate to my donors choose so I can have stuff for my classroom on the 2nd of August, uh, which is like two days. Uh, Bill and Melinda Gates will be matching 50% of donations. So I will be posting about that a lot. So please follow me and then give me money for my classroom things. Yes. Give Nikki money for classroom things. Uh, and last but not least, Dee, I guess. Hello, my lovely creatures of the dark. My name is D, or it's the Riddler or Lady Love Dies, or Dr. June D Doom Jazz, or Crimson Acid, or Yuri Knight, or One Last Kiss, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'm a voice actor, streamer, musician, professional GM all across the interwebs, and you can follow me on very many social medias. It'll always be under the same name. Um, and I have a plan that I started working on recently, so tap in, because I might be on Critical Misses again soon in a different seat than Playa. Who knows? The return? Mm -hmm. But thank you all so much for watching. I've been playing Donnie Powers. 
And uh, yeah, I'll toss it back to our lovely co-GMs. Oh, uh, do you want to go uh, first or do I, you want rock paper? Yeah, sure. I'm going to go. We can rock paper. Okay. Rock paper. Scissors. Shoot. <laughs> Scissors. Okay. I guess I go first. Hello. Hi. My name is Darby, otherwise known as Chaotic Darby on the internet. I'm a TTRPG performer, streamer, game designer, possum, and all around menace on the web. You can find me uh, places where handles are to be held. Under Chaotic Darby, unless you don't find me there, then I don't have a handle there. Uh, but primarily, like, Twitter, or X, I guess, uh, Tumblr, Twitch, uh, Blue Skies, the Heaven Above. Um, you can find me in those places and follow along for me to do stuff and things. I am the head of community outreach here at Critical Misses. Development. Development! Development! God damn it! You're good. Go. Development! It's okay, the words are um, hard. We're fine. Words are really hard. Um, here at Critical Misses, I, you can also find me on the internet uh, Sunday mornings, uh, 10 a.m. PST, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. EST, playing in a Star Trek Adventures game. Uh, we are definitely not going to die and have to make new carriages. That'll, everything will be fine. You can also find me every other Wednesday on Neon Lights Roleplay. Wednesday is 5 p.m. playing Stardust Ghosts, and then you can find me here again on the 14th of August. We're gonna take a little little breaky break break here for the gens of cons. Yes, uh, we're taking a little two week break after Gen uh, for this week coming up because of Gen Con, and then afterwards uh, probably because I'll be on the road back from Gen Con. Um, but yes, that has been. Uh, I'm, I guess I, I should probably do my outros. Hi, I'm Anita, otherwise known as Panita or Critical Misses. I'm a TTRPG streamer, graphic designer, producer, and cat mom about space. Uh, you can find me here on Mondays. On Tuesdays, uh, you can find me over on Modifius's channel for Star Trek Adventures Actual Play. And um, we don't have any shows until the week after Gen Con. Then we've got our last two episodes of um, uh, Our Thirsty Sword Lesbians uh Three Musketeers inspired campaign call for Queen and Country. Um, last two episodes of that are going to drop uh, the next two weeks after Gen Con. Um, and then after that, we're probably going to be putting out calls for new shows. So sign up and stuff. Let's. I'll, I'm going to leave that to our creative director uh, now that we've got that. Uh, that's it. That's all. That's me. We're going to head off on a raid. Uh, who do we want to go say hello to, friends? Uh, let's see. I see Lost Caravan is live. I see Neon Lights Roleplay is live. I see. Yep. Total Party Chill. Total Party Chill. Well, uh, looks like Total Party Chill is playing some water home. Let's go say hello to them. Uh, but yes, thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with us. Um, and we will see you next time and time again. Bye, everybody.